Welcome to the Stuff and Things Podcast. Your home for all stuff related to your favorite things in entertainment. Now, here are your hosts. Hello everybody and welcome back to Marvel Monday here on the Stuff and Thangs podcast. I am Sam. Joining me as always to discuss the latest episode of Moon Knight is my partner in crime, it's Stefan. Hey, I'm renaming Mondays from Marvel Mondays to What the F Mondays. <laughs> well yeah, it's a bit like that, definitely, yeah. Yeah, it's um I um wow. I, I, I love I love the sort of when I watch the show and I write bullet points and then I typically have a second view in to try and fill in some of the gaps and make sure that I'm ready for when we do talk about it. And I've watched this episode three times. Um, and you're and still the, sitting there going, eh? Well, no, well, the main reason was is if I um, did this podcast off of the first set of notes I wrote, okay, and I think you'll find this funny, Yeah. Um, is the very first note is cold open, oh, there's ten gods, question mark. This has serious mummy Tomb Raider vibes. Yes. WTF. Yeah, see, like, whoever decided... And like, then what? Hippo. And then Hippo. The, the, the literally Hi- four bullet Hi- points from Hi-Bot-Dumus. episode one, yeah. Hi-Bot-Dumus. That's that right. is living rent-free in my head, as well as my two stepchildren's heads now, because I've sung it so much. Yeah. Um, if they sing that at school at any point this week, I am going to get in so much trouble from teachers who think I let them watch Moon Knight. Well, that's a possibility, yeah. yeah. Um, no, it's my um, my daughter was uh, singing that Easy Street from The Walking Dead for ages, and I always thought that that, given the context <laughs> of the scene, yep. would be quite bad. But no, do you know the song that's stuck in my head, and it's from Moon Knight? They featured it in episode one and the trailer. Hmm. It's bloody Engelbert Humperdinck, The Man Without Love. Yes, yep. Like, I have never listened to an Engelbert Humperdinck song in my life. I am literally aware of this man's existence because he has the most bizarre showbiz name and ever. Didn't he do Eurovision Song Contest for us once? Mate, honestly, I wouldn't know. Or Literally, I'm aware of him because of the stupid name and a comedy sketch I once saw, which was all about how in the hell did he end up picking that name. Yep. And... So I I don't really know any of the songs, and if I've heard them, and perhaps people have covered them over the years, I've just not been aware. So to go from that to literally having to download this song onto my phone because it is just drilled into my skull. Now. <laughs> yeah. So um, the use of music in Marvel generally is always very good, um, yeah. and I feel like. I don't know about you, but I felt like they really upped their game after Thor Ragnarok. It was like in the films and everything, it was like the use of music's been good. I remember ACDC and Iron Man and stuff like yeah. that. It felt like you know, you've always done quite well. And then like Thor Ragnarok happened. And then since then, um, like Captain Marvel, for example, the 90s kind of music soundtrack yeah. to that was great. Um, obviously for me, because I was born in the 80s, grew up in the 90s. So yeah, to me it was absolutely brilliant. That was like but, childhood um, memories, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, But anyway, the, the use of music, uh, especially on trailers, you only got to look at the Thor uh, Love and Thunder trailer, to, you know, a bit of Guns and Roses. Just the music, and I'm pumped for that movie. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So um, with this, so, so this is uh, Moon Knight Season 1, Episode 4, and the title of the episode is... The Tomb. Um, I think we're going to break this down into two parts, and I think anybody who watched this episode has done that mentally anyway. I think so. Now, what I want to know is who walked into the Marvel, like, writer's studio, whatever. Yeah. And when I've got an idea, and they've gone, okay, and he's gone, Indiana Jones. Yeah. But more swearing, split, split personalities, and Marvel. Yeah. And that guy deserves a medal. Well, I mean, he basically... Like, um, he's phenomenal. I mean, the, the whole show, obviously, is taken from comics. So yes. this is all a concept that somebody had. And when they've adapted it to the television, I think they've... Like, this episode, just focusing purely on episode four, I did write down the mummy, Tomb Raider, Indiana Jones kind that of That sort of thing, and, definitely. And it, really, it really did. Um, you know, and so we, we open the episode continuing uh, from episode three... And the cold open is actually the statue of Khonshu being placed on the shelf. And we see there are ten of them. Um, So I I did sort of think to myself that that was a very deliberate shot 
at the opening of this yeah, episode. The, the for camera us. panning out to show us, look at all these other ones. Yeah. And I'm uh, like, but, oh, okay. But also, like, we've not... Like, that was it. That was it. The cold open and then nothing else about Konshu or these other gods in the whole episode. And yeah. I know there's a hell of a lot of YouTubers out there and stuff who have freeze-framed, zoomed in to try and analyse who all the gods are and they've got theories and all of them. I've not done that. I've just gone, no. oh, look, there's ten. I've counted them. So, and in uh, fairness, I think if I watch one of these guys on the TikToks and YouTube and stuff like yeah. that, he could be making it all up. As long as he says yeah. it's confidently, well, I'm going to yeah. believe him. Yeah, that's, that's like, yeah, well, yeah, definitely. Um, So... We, we go into this episode uh, from that scene and we, we follow on from where our characters were. And I, and I want to talk about Layla to, to start yep. us off in this because in this episode, um, I don't know about you, but there's a certain trope in TV and in movies especially uh, that existed when me and you were kids definitely in every show, every movie we watched and it's gradually changed but still there a lot is that the female character is the female lead at some point will get in trouble and the male character will save her. It's kind of like a trope where, yeah. you know, uh, and in this, for example, we see that they, I think quite cleverly, teased it multiple times and then had her fight her way out or deal with it herself. So, yep. for example, Mark slash Stephen is out cold. Uh, a, a jeep rolls up on them, firing at them, and she, you know, realizes and she spots that this this truck's got a big ammunition cache on the back. She jumps into their truck, leaving him like passed out still. So they're like, "Oh, well, he's clearly dead." Yeah, ignore him. Grabs, Let's go for her. Yeah, yeah, grabs a couple of flares, sets one off to draw them in, and then doubles back around and throws the other one into the back blowing up the munitions now during all of that the kind of the shots of her distracting him and stuff i keep expecting you know mark or and or the far more violent third alt that yep. you know is teased heavily to emerge and just wipe the guys out and yeah. i'm like and i'm kind of like they're teasing that they're teasing that oh no Layla's a badass. Layla's dealt with it herself. I'm really pleased. With yeah, that. I mean, I'm not entirely sure a road flare would set off an ammunition cart to that sort of an explosion, but I'm going with it purely because it looked awesome. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, I, I mean, yeah, heat <laughs> would definitely do. It. I don't know. I don't think it happened that fast. Let's no, put it that but way, it but... looked damn awesome. So I'm like, yeah. yep, go with it. I'm happy yeah. with this. I'm doing it. That's fine. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Um, later on in the episode, we also see another example of this, where this creature has basically chased her and grabs her. And this, this was a jump scare, by the way. This, this, uh, I would say this, so. Yeah. This led to my daughter leaping a good inch out of the out of the sofa groove that she was in um <laughs> and and declaring nope <laughs> which she does not like jump scares um and we see Layla vanish and you're kind of like oh no how's she gonna get out of this and then she tries to fight her way free and is dragged back again you're like oh no come on Stephen, where are you yeah but again nope she fights her way clear of it and she deals with that and then the thing chases her again and once again she's on her back and she's being like attacked and you're thinking well who's gonna come out of somewhere who who's, yeah, who's gonna, gonna come save, save her? her yeah yeah but no she deals with it kicks the thing into the into the coal <laughs> Yeah, they so both again, go flying off a cliff. Yeah, it, it was this fun kind of, like I said, this this playing with that, playing with that trope, and I really liked it. I really liked the fact that uh, each time she was confronted with something, she dealt with it. Yeah, even and, to the extent of when she goes off the cliff and she's got to climb back up, you're kind of yeah, waiting for, for the hand. Look down yeah. and you see a hand appear to pull her up. Yeah, nope, she's like, yeah. no, I got this. I got, no, this. I got this and and I think especially for me and you uh, being older I mean I know I'm older than you even but it, it just kind of like it's a nice reflection of that's, that's changed because when we were younger there's no way no, that right. would have been written yeah. that way it's <laughs> just no chance no we've now got a Lara Croft style character here yeah. kicking ass yeah and, and, that's, and that's what we like um, so uh, like I said, we're going through this in sort of stages. That was just something I wanted to point out. But one of the things we do see in this is when Stephen and Mark are basically disagreeing. And I messaged you when <laughs> this something happened. And I said to you, I said, something happens in this episode. And I was drinking my drink when it happened. And I 
I literally the drink came out my nose. I snort laughed whilst <laughs> drinking, which is dangerous. deadly. Yeah, so dangerous. Um, and that moment was basically um, Stephen's in control of the body. Mark saying this is a suicide mission. Give me back. And Stephen's like, No, no. Me and Layla, we got this. Um, he kind of drops Mark in it a little bit by saying, you know, me and Mark had a deal that when Conchie was gone, he'd vanish. And Layla's like, what? And I was kind of like, oh, Stephen, that's that's uncool, bro. That's, that's, yeah, that's, there's a that's bro not, code, literal yeah, here. Now, come you know on, man, saying. that's that's not good. I mean, you're doing a dirty on you. And then, like, way, full yeah. on drops in, like, oh, yeah, no, Mark, he's, he's only running away because uh, Konsu wants you instead. So, you know, you know. He yeah. literally just tells him every, tells her everything. Yeah, well, it's like Stephen, cool. what are you doing? Well, I, I was, I was going to come on to that. I mean, so basically, he kind of Mark says to him, like, "You've fallen in love with my wife. If you touch her, I will throw us off a cliff, Stephen." Which, yeah. which, I mean, I'm laughing at this. I'm like chuckling, thinking, "What a." I mean, this is kind of like a really mad dynamic going on right here, but yeah, they're I'm doing like, it so well. Yeah, because you look at poor Layla's character, and you're like, "Well." They're kind of the same person, but yeah, she not must quite. be. She like, must be. You must feel really good because she's like literally like she says like you smell like it, and I think it's in that moment she's that's when the kiss is going to happen because it's like she leans in and and it's her husband, you know, that, yeah. that's the man she loves. Um, and then just before she goes to kiss him, and just before he blurts that out that like oh Mark's doing this to protect you. Da, 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 da. And it's funny because, like you said, he's kind of blurted down. And you're like, dude, that that was a confidence thing. You know, that was that was not a go tell everyone kind of thing. Yeah. But he's done it because Stephen ultimately is actually quite a good guy, and he just wanted her to be fully aware before he uh, before he kissed her as Stephen that you know Mark's trying to protect you. He's not pushed you away because he's run off with another woman or anything like that. He he's genuinely just trying to protect you. Yeah. He then does kiss her, which to me felt really awkward. I don't know about you, but it just didn't look. Yeah, it was a bit of a strange one. Yeah, it was. It was a bit awkward. Um, he's like, you know, he's not exactly Mister Ladies Man himself, no, anyway. No, so no, he's gone and blinded to kiss on her. She's kind of like taken I'm back not... for a second, but yeah. then kind of gives it back as well. Yeah, and then you're like, yeah. it looks like your husband, but he's not your husband. So yeah, that's well, a little that, that bit... was. At the same time, I feel like she has more of a chemistry connection with Stephen than she does with Mark. I think and from the interaction we've seen, because Mark is very trying to push her away. I, yeah. I think if Mark was... I think if we got some scenes where Mark was able to be more like himself, because there was a scene on the boat in the previous episode where he was relaxed for a while and they seemed to have quite good chemistry and then he kind of like snapped himself out of it like nope can't be doing this you know yeah. we need to focus um but she absells down into this tomb uh because they're chasing harrow trying to find this this tomb yeah. um and and St- and this is it this is the moment because you hear that kind of musical sharp noise that they do whenever you've seen the personalities split uh, Mark is obviously able not to take over the body, but is able to take hold of his left fist for a moment and literally punches Stephen in the face. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I mean, it's so juvenile, but like I said, I've proper snort laugh then, whilst having a drink. And from was, the way yeah. uh, Stephen lands down in the tomb, I'm pretty sure Mark did actually get to throw him off a cliff. Yeah, I'm, like, yeah I'm, I'm fairly confident that Mark was just like, and in you go. Yeah, yeah. You know, this isn't going to kill you, but it's going to hurt a little bit, you <laughs> bar steward. Um, it, yeah, it was funny. Uh, the other thing that happened when he lands as well, which absolutely cracks me up, which I think, again, is a true testament to Stephen being very different than Mark, is Layla like, goes to him like, oh, are you okay? And he gets up, dusting himself off, and he goes, oh, wow, look at you. And she does this really cute kind of like, aww. Look at you know he's talk. Oh, what a thing to say to me! And then he looks straight past her yeah. at this Egyptian relic, and she's like, "All oh, right, okay, yeah, I get it, it's Stephen." <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, this is this is very Stephen. Oh, okay, uh, this isn't Mark. You know, yeah. if Mark had landed and said he'd, he'd only have eyes for me in this moment, but no, Stephen's looking at the cool stuff. All right, fair enough. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Yep. <laughs> uh, w- w- what we do get in that as well, which I again, I mean, these are different personalities and and basically different memories um, of of things. So 
he quite innocently assumes her father's alive when she's talking about, you know, I did this symbol because, you know, my dad, etc. And he's like, oh, he's a bit of a, you know, he's a bit, he isn't talking in the past tense about him at all. And no. she kind of corrects him. And, you know, he's genuinely like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm really sorry, but I bet he'd be really proud of you being here. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no part of Stephen at all that has any inkling of what's happened there or any memory of. No. Um, that that in itself must be a difficult thing for Layla. You know, we see that later on, but it, that must be quite a difficult thing because she's got that history with Mark and here she is literally looking at and talking to Mark, albeit with a different accent. <laughs> yes. It just... Um, I, I think there's there's times in this where the character Layla goes quiet or you know is kind of conversing and then just sort of tapers off, and I think that's actually quite a clever way they've done it because it's you know it's that human thing of I'm talking to you and I still can't quite get my head around it, you know. It's, it's yeah, and, and she's almost got to explain everything that she's ever said again. Mm, yeah. So yeah, like. Even the painful things. Yeah, which, which even the painful things. A... That you could have had a serious conversation with someone and got all of that painful yeah. stuff out in the air, and then yeah. all of a sudden you're like, oh, you don't know any of this. Yeah, I've got to do that again. Which, yeah. Which, let's face it, no one wants to have those conversations. No, on definitely not. On occasion. Definitely not. No. <laughs> new, 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 new. Um, so, yeah, I uh, <laughs> like I said... I, I like these scenes. I really like the kind of the, these two as uh, like a duo solving the puzzle of the maze that they've walked into. Yeah. Um, and then when I said it had serious mummy vibes, I think that comes from the fact that when they're in there, they're like, what are Harrow's men shooting at? Or who are they shooting at? And then they talk about, oh, you know, these priests, etc., were buried with whoever it was to guard the tomb, guard the entrance. Yeah. And then we have one of them. One of them, a creature is alive. A mummy, in essence, is there and is disemboweling one of Harrow's men. Uh, the guy who acted as a police officer. Yeah, um, I mean, wow. Like, it kind of changed genre almost slightly in this. Yeah. As in, yeah. it's gone into... Like, almost into the horror scene, isn't it? It's yeah, the sci-fi horror, horror, the horror kind of, sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. what's interesting to me about this is I think it kind of opens that door, cracks open that door into the kind of mystic side of Marvel Comics. Yep. Um, you know, we've had magic introduced via Wanda, Doctor Strange, and that kind of thing. And we know that Blade is obviously going to be bringing in vampires and, and that side of aspect of it. And we've literally had here the ancient Egyptian gods and mummies, you know. So yeah. this kind of these kind of creatures, etc., do exist inside the MCU. Yeah, whatever universe they're in, they are there. Yeah. They are there. Yeah. So um, with the fact that Blade has a movie coming, with the fact that we saw the Black Knight uh, hinted at, and you know, directly told about at the end of Eternals. And clearly is going to appear with Blade at some point. Do you think that we are reaching a point where Marvel is going to be creating teams, not just the Avengers? And the reason why I say that is because if you look on um, Disney Plus right now, you'll see that the shows that were set in New York, the Defenders, are called the Defenders Saga. Yep. And I wonder if in time some other things might get added into that and might get kind of padded out as those characters maybe appear in other things. Yeah, I mean, um, we've heard the rumours of the She-Hulk stuff. Yeah, So and, she's going to be joining with them. Does she get put into the Defenders category? Yeah, I exactly. Assume... I, I wonder. I wonder about yeah, that. Yeah, I'd assume people like Blade... Um, Ah, uh, the guy from the Black Knight. Is it the Black Knight? Yeah. From the end yeah. of Eternals, Moon yeah. Knight. I had a kind of assumed those three would probably be categorised together as well. Well, th- as there was the a more group... supernatural. Yeah, the supernatural side of it. And there's a group in the comics that dealt with the supernatural stuff called the Midnight Suns. Yep. Um, I think that was what they were called anyway. I'm, I'm now doubting myself as I've said it. I said yup um, in agreement. It's so much confidence. And then you're like, ah, oh, maybe not. Well, 
it's one of those <laughs> things where Marvel's so kind of like vast. Yeah, Midnight Suns. There we go. Ooh, I feel better now. Um, so yeah, that does exist. Now, Doctor Strange was in that, for example. Um, the, the character who was in that, who I would love to be in it again, is the Punisher. Yeah, <laughs> because the idea of that character, Frank Castle, very literal, very real world, very bad guys, drug dealers, stuff like that. He is taken off the board. The idea that someone would go to him and go, Frank, we need your skill set. OK, what do you need? Yeah, we're hunting werewolves. What? Do you, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. that character. There's, that, there's some vampires the whole, I need help with. I'm yeah, sorry. The, what? Yeah. yeah, the whole interaction just with that conversation could be an episode of hilarity for me on its own. Yeah. You know, picking Frank Castle up, especially if you could get John Burnfall back. His his um interpretation and his... He was uh, brilliant, yeah. Yeah, his transmission to screen for the, the Punisher is, is next level for me. Um, And I'd love that. I'd love, if you're going to bring him back, put him with this group that seems to be forming. Yeah. Um, because we saw Blade go to the Black Knight, so we know there is already some teaming up going on. Yeah. We know from what Marvel have said, Moon Knight isn't getting a season two. They're literally calling it a limited series. They put it forward to awards as a limited series. So oh, it's wow. only ever going to be six episodes. So with that being the case, Moon Knight is a character going to move to a movie or perhaps this kind of Midnight Suns thing coming in, Moon Knight is a character is going to appear again. You, you've got to hope so. Like I'd be really sad if it was a, a one and done introduction wrapped up done. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I, I completely agree with you. Uh, but yeah, anyway, that, that's kind of like a bigger thing. Coming back into the episode, um, whilst they're in this tomb and everything like that, Stephen and Lady get separated by this mummy in essence. Yeah. Hilarious scene where Stephen throws stuff on it and goes, oh, I squished it. That yeah. cracked me up. Um, I squished it. I squished it. We then have the scene I talked about earlier where Layla gets tracked down by it and she fights it off herself. Layla then is confronted by Harrow. So Harrow's there and Layla have a conversation. Whilst that's happening, and we'll obviously come straight back to that, Stephen goes and finds the long-lost tomb of Alexander the Great. Yeah, now that was cool. As a history nerd, yeah, right. I it's oh, really really funny. Geeking out. Yeah, because this what's really funny is last week on the podcast. You remember I talked about there was that hint on the back of one of the jackets of the guys that Mark was fighting. Yeah, about the Raman Tut, um, who was a uh, went back in time version of Kang the Conqueror, who went back to rule in Egypt as a pharaoh. Yep. And they confirmed it. And I'm like, oh, wow, they confirmed it. So once Stephen finds this long-lost tomb, and he's, I'm like, oh, it's going to be that. It's going to be confirmed. That's obviously why they confirmed it, because they wanted people to go into this episode. And when he says it, everyone's going to go, oh, you know, oh, my God, it's a link to Kang. Instead of them going, oh, it's this guy. And everyone yeah. going, who? Oh, yeah, who? Yeah, yeah. So I'm kind of like, oh, I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting for that. But then he starts talking about, oh, it's Macedonia. And I'm like... Wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. It's obviously going to be like a case of, you know, a case of this is going to be garbled and whoever this was. Of course, Kang was from the future. Perhaps there's even going to be English on the tomb, you know. It's really yeah. going to mess him up and he's not going to know this person must must be from a god, you know, da 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 Yeah. And then he says, this must be the lost tomb of Alexander the Great. And basically, so the, the Marvel nerdy side of me went, huh? The history geek inside me just flip it was like <laughs> oh my god that's so amazing like the fact that they incorporated this into a marvel show when i like i said i am that much of a history nerd ah oh, dude i was just so happy yeah because it is one of the great mysteries of the world you know where is alexander the great's tomb you know what happened to him yeah uh, we know that an egyptian pharaoh basically laid claim to his body uh, alexandra in egypt but that's it. It then just vanished. Nobody knows. So, like I said, the fact it was incorporated into this made me very happy. And so I did a little bit of research to see if Alexander the Great is any sort of character <laughs> in in Marvel Comics. Um, did you look at this? I didn't. Okay, yeah. So, basically, in the 50s, Alexander the Great appeared in Marvel Comics in a few different things. Seriously? Nothing I saw would translate to the MCU. I can't um, believe Marvel put Alexander the Great in. I mean, I suppose 
If they've put Mate, Hercules they, they got and Zeus Thor, in it, then, yeah. Hercules, Fair you enough. know, they, they uh, people, from, people from history. Yeah, i, I got to be honest with you, nothing I saw there I thought, oh, that's going to tie in. I just sort of thought, well, that's nice and random. Yeah. Um, yeah, and also Marvel Comics in the 50s? Wow. Okay. <laughs> if if you if someone published that today, they wouldn't just be cancelled, they'd probably be jailed. Just just putting that out there. <laughs> oh wow, that bad. Oh mate, you got no idea. There there's there's one panel in the thing that someone scanned and put online where literally a a good guy a a good guy puts a white sheet over his head to chase off three black characters from from his uh from his place. Wow. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I just I looked at it and went, This is a joke. Some this isn't real. This is no way this is real. And it's like, yeah, in the nineteen fifties that was considered funny. Oh uh, Yeah, ouch. Times have changed. Times times have changed. People have evolved. Um but yeah, wow. Yeah, it was quite uh Yeah. It was quite eye opening I'm like, wow, Alexander the Great's a bit of a dick. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, I mean the other thing that's funny, and you will see this a lot, is slang has changed over the years. Like slang has changed, and I think there's a famous panel that I've sent to you, uh, which is Captain America and Iron Man, and they're using the slang from the 1930s, which was tough dick, which means like you don't know what's going on, or, you know that's something, and you call something tough dick, and in the panel it literally goes, "Hey Iron Man, you're tough dick," and I'm like. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'd ever <laughs> say that to somebody. That anymore. doesn't translate so well anymore. That, yeah. that doesn't work. That doesn't. Yeah, that doesn't really cover it anymore. But anyway, yeah. So, so if you're interested in quite shocking history, look look that up from a comic point of view. From a actual world history point of view, the fact they've incorporated this with Alexander the Great, like I said, I was. Yeah, I was very happy. Yeah. Um, we have that great interaction again between Mark and Stephen. Um, Stephen's basically unraveling this he's working it out and he works out that if you're going to hide something on you to avoid grave robbery you know all these things that they used to take into account in ancient Egypt how yeah. where would you hide it and he's like oh, he was the void and he, he kind of has this look on his face as he realises where it's going to be it's uh, yeah. like oh he was the voice <sighs> oh no <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, like he's apologising as he like yeah, whacks the jaw mis- off. I'm sorry. To, to Mr. The Great. No, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm so sorry. And he's like, literally. And the best thing is, Mark, yeah, get your hand in there. Get it down, down in there. I'm like, Mark, dude, you don't have to say that. <laughs> but Mark, he did. It, it was so good. Yeah, it's like, Mark, you're making it worse now. Oh, get your arm in there, boy. Come on. It's like, no. Come on, to stop. the elbow. Come on. Yeah, yeah no. I know. <laughs> yeah. And of course, he does find what he's looking for, which is the encased stone of Amet. Mm. Um, so that that's happened. Now, whilst that is going on, Layla and Harrow are having a conversation. There is a divide, sort of like where there's a natural barrier, so he can't get to her. But he says enough that she doesn't walk away from him. Yeah, she uh, kind of goes around the corner and then gets drawn back. Yeah, uh, he. Basically claims that when his scales, you know, the power that he has, weighs a person, he gets glimpses of their their pain, their memories, their their kind of their key moments. Yeah. And he basically points out that Mark is, you know, an average person whose, you know, soul is not worthy is in pain and like your husband is in agony. Mm. And I'm kinda of like, wow, you know, that's that's kind of deep. That's that's quite bad you know but that's not that's not pointing out anything that is going to make you think mark's evil you know the guy's in so much pain and agony and you know split personality and stuff like that they got you know kind of need to hug yeah. yeah you need you need to look after surely this is just gonna make layla want want to be with him more and then he doubles down on that to talk about her father with great detail of even like the scarf he was wearing that she'd clearly made for him yeah, that's when it started getting he, a bit brutal. He basically makes her say it as well. He makes her say, did Mark kill my father? So Harrow, Harrow didn't say it. Harrow didn't point that out. All he's done is lay serious hints. She's drawn the conclusion and then he said, you said it. He never once confirmed it. 
Yep. And I found that really interesting because it would appear to me, and I've gone over the episodes in my mind but not rewatched. I don't think he lies. I don't think Har- I don't know whether this is because of the power he's got or what's going on. A lot of the time, he is deliberately very evasive in the way he speaks and the way he presents things. Like when he went into the tomb with all the gods, he never lied. He just didn't answer the question. You know, it's like, true. are you trying to f- are you trying to find? He's like, no, I'm. You know, I'm in the desert. You dragged me here. This guy's mental. You know, you're not going to listen to him. And they all went, really? Are you not well? Like, no one followed up on it. No one kind of went, you haven't answered the question, Mr. Harrow. <laughs> you know, are you looking for Annette? He's like, oh, I'm in the desert. Which he was. He just deliberately avoided answering the question. And with yeah, her, he doesn't true. say. And he doesn't confirm. Like, he just literally gives her all the information or gives her all these hints which she then gets the draw on herself. And he even goes as far as saying, you said it. Like, not not me. I've not told you that. You said it. Um, which sends her away, obviously very upset, very angry. And she confronts Stephen. <laughs> and Stephen's not prepared for this. No, poor bloke. He's poor, got no poor idea. Poor Stephen is just over the moon he's found that. He's like, we won! Look, look what I got! He's like practically dancing and wanting to show her all the cool stuff. Like, look, look! And she's like, can he hear me? And she, what, Alexander? I bloody hope not. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just, Such I just a good line. Yeah. yeah. I just had my arm down his throat. Yeah. Um, and she then like really confronts him about Mark, and Mark then takes the bullet. Now I think in that moment Stephen went, "Nope, yeah. <laughs> you deal with this. <laughs> Your trouble, buddy, not yeah. mine. Yep. This, this is absolutely you having to deal with this. I got the no kiss. Way. I got the happy times. This is now you, buddy. Yeah. yeah, it's like there's no way I am confronting this. Now, there's two ways of looking at it. Obviously, there is the way that Stephen just went, "Nope," or. Does Mark have that ability, because he is the original, to really take control if in the moment he has to? I, I, I think it I think perhaps a combination I think perhaps he really went to take control and Stephen was like, Oh, I don't want to deal with this. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no. I, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I um, think there was a lot of that is Stephen going, No, 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 thank you, yeah. not me. <laughs> yeah. In in the moment with Mark and her, then in this moment, she he's basically just trying to get out of there because he knows that Harrow's not going to be far away. She obviously wants to talk about this, and she asks, "Did you kill my father?" And he says, "No." He's kind of categoric again that he didn't, but then he does admit to the fact he was there, yeah. and he says he was working with somebody who got greedy, killed everyone. Because he tried to stop him, he even shot him, and he should have died. And obviously this is where he met Konshu and became Moon Knight. Which tells me the fact that the bad guy knows so much about it yeah, tells me that Harrow was there as well. For Harrow See, I'm to won- know I'm so wondering much, about this. is yeah. that the time where Konshu went, oh, do you know what, that's a better guy, I'll, I'll take that guy instead actually. Well, see, that, I, I was brilliant. Well, man, I want to talk about this. Me and you have been wondering about how in the hell did Harrow end up separating from Konshu, and the way he talks, like you tortured me, you did this. It suddenly occurred to me he's basically sounding like a jilted ex. Yeah, you know, if you, if you stop taking everything at face value for a minute and just attribute it to someone ranting about an ex, he really falls into that category. So, what if? he was there Konshu with with Harrow and and he looked at the guy who was dying on the floor and thought actually that's a better bet for me this is Harrow thank you for your service but no not anymore and Konshu then took himself to Mark leaving Harrow behind you'd understand why Harrow was bitter nasty would would be out for revenge in a way yeah he lost the cool outfit more than anything well, yeah, but a badass. Bad. And but, we've heard from the conversation between Mark and Stephen had about when Conchu's not here anymore. There's yeah. no healing powers. There's exactly, no nothing. Yeah. So therefore, Harrow at some point lost not just the cool yeah. uniform, but he lost the healing powers, the extra yeah. strength and everything. Yeah, and, and I mentioned to you, like, how old is he? How long has he been around? Yeah. Because 
uh, I, I like the idea that he's been the avatar for a long time. I like the idea that perhaps he has been that avatar for maybe hundreds of years. And now he's having to live a mortal life. And perhaps he doesn't want to live that mortal life. He wants to be an avatar. He wants Which that immortality. why he's trying to find the Egyptian Amet. god and bring her back. Because yeah. then maybe he can become... Be the avatar, yeah. yeah. You know, and he, he's certainly boasting a form of power which he's got in that staff, which I'm guessing he learned about from being associated with Konshu, etc. So, uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. And I really the thing is, there's only two episodes left. You know, there's only so much storytelling we can be given. Yes, so, um, it, it's it's tough, but you know, I'd love to know that. I'd love to know that scene, and I do wonder if we will see it. The other thing I wanted to ask you about is. He talks about, you know, I was working with a partner and he got greedy. Yep. What do you think about... Because in the comics there are three personalities. Mark is the main and he has two. He has Jake and he has Stephen. So far in the TV show we've seen that Mark and Stephen... And it's beyond hint to that now. It's basically screaming at us that there is a third. There is a more violent persona there. Yeah. What would you say if I thought that they were going to vary it from the comics slightly? What if Mark is an alt? What if Jake is the main personality and Jake killed her father and was involved in that and Mark basically took charge and locked him away afterwards? Because... Later on in the episode, we see a quite literal version of him being locked away, which I'm going to come on to. But I, I just think as a variation on the comic, slightly, but it, it, I don't know about you, but it just kind of feels like it always feels like there's more to the story with that. It feels like there's more to it. And Mark, you know, I, I don't know. What, what do you think? Because Mark doesn't seem to be aware of another alt, but is that because he's deliberately not revealing the fact he's an alternate as well? And he also says that he'll go away. Yeah, like, to be able to go away doesn't make sense if he's the body itself. Like, yeah. if Stephen was the original and yeah. Mark was a voice in his head, then you'd go, yeah. okay, it makes sense, fair enough. But we are led to believe that Mark is... It's the other way, yeah. So... How long has Jake, if they do bring him in, been locked up for without yeah. any control? Yeah, and and this is this is kind of this is the interesting thing for me. So we will now transition to the second part of this episode, <laughs> where Mark, Stephen, they are shot by Harrow. Now, now I go on. It's go like on. when you are knowing you're only having a six-part series. Yeah. To then shoot the main character and potentially kill them off, it looks like, yeah. in the fourth episode, that already yeah. has you set up right going, wait a minute. This this show's built different. Yeah. And, and the main reason why I'm going to say I thought he's dead was because leading up to this, I saw previews from a lot of bloggers, a lot of people who were given this episode so they could create content to yes. build the hype. And it was genuine. There was a genuine split between people who were like, oh, I love this, this was great, and people who went, no, I'm done. Yeah, so when he and gets shot, you start thinking, okay, so oh, the ones wow. that are done is because they've literally killed him off, and yeah. now someone else is going to take the mantle? Or... Well, uh, my, my thinking was they've built this show for Layla to be Moon Knight and go forward as Moon Knight. Yeah. And so I'm thinking there's a lot of guys out there who are a little bit... Um, put off shall we say by seeing characters go from being male to female yeah and if they you only you only got to look at the thor love and thunder reactions oh god yeah, there's a lot of very precious fragile little guys out there yes <laughs> and the other, side, like, the other side is the people that have followed the comics for example yeah if he's not killed off in the comics but they do it within the yeah. fourth episode that's kind well, of like, people, we yeah. did the walking dead and we were fuming yeah. that they killed off like a good two or three different characters yeah. Yeah. So I can kind of understand that side of it as well. So when he got shot, I'm sat there like, 
They've done oh, it. Wow. This, They've yeah, actually. This is, this why, is yeah. different. This isn't what. Yeah. What the hell's going to happen in the last two episodes? They've just killed the main <laughs> character. What the heck happens <laughs> now? Well, what was funny for me, right? Is as that happened, I'm like you. I'm like, oh wow, that's the big thing. This is it. Wow, this is gonna. Be, wow, what a what a diversion. Now I had a phone call, so I had to hit pause on the episode when I'm watching it. Yeah. And as I've taken the phone call and I've finished the phone call, and I'm about to come back to the episode. I realised there's a lot left in this episode. Yeah. Now I know, I know they tag on a load for like the longest credits ever on on Disney Plus, and that's fine. But I'm looking at it and I'm <laughs> Who thinking, plays Mark Spencer in Korean in yeah, yeah every exactly. like language you can And think. I'm like, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, well, maybe he's not. You know, I'm like, well, what the hell's about to happen? I can tell you right now. That if you'd given me six months and allowing me to guess one guess per minute every minute for a full six months, I would still not have guessed what was about to happen. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. This is where we go from what are they doing? This is insane to yeah. what, what the are they doing? Yeah. This is insane. Yeah. <laughs> um. So basically, what we see is Mark falling, and he falls into a shallow pool of water, and then. What then happens is we see his body appear to sink. We know it's a shallow pool, so where is he sinking? And then we see like a light, and I'm thinking, oh wow, Moon Knight's going to save. You know, the the lunar god's going to save. How did he? How did he escape his tomb? You know, what's going on here? And then the bright light becomes like a light being shined in somebody's eyes, and then we're in this very white. Uh, what's what's a what's a correct term? Uh, hospital. You know, yeah. we're in a very very white hospital for people who have clearly got uh various mental disorders and things. And we are then is it a psychiatric given hospital. Is that what it's... Yeah, psychiatric yeah. hospitals. Fair. Now, what we then see is what I would like to call uh, an Easter egg hunt, which Wasn't is in it essence. Just... Which is in essence crazy. Now, if you are on the young, cool, hip app TikTok, you'll see that I've done a video on there, and I'm going to share it on a couple of other platforms as well. Yeah. Where basically I try and list all of the ones I saw, and I'm going to hand it to you because I know you <laughs> did this when you were watching. So it. Yeah, you're only handing this to me because I sent you a message going, "Oi, yeah." I um yeah, I saw yeah. the TikTok go live, and I was like, "Now, Sam is known for doing lists of notes and things like that." Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I come into these podcasts and I just feed off you. Yeah. Um. So this episode, I actually made a note on my phone of like, I've watched the episode twice, and second time, I, like first time I watched it, I saw bits and pieces, and the second time around, I was like, I'm gonna catch all the bits in that end credit, like that end scene. I'm gonna try and find all the bits. And, yeah. and then I went on TikTok and was like, Ah, oh, no, Sam's already put a video out. Well, I thought I was going to look all clever and smart, and then I was like, oh, now I just look like I'm copying Sam's TikTok. No, no, sure. <laughs> we, we, we need to work on our communication, for one. Um, but it, it was one of those things where, I, like I said, I ended up watching the episode three times, and I, I there were obvious ones, yeah. and then I thought, right, I'm going to watch this scene again, and I'm just going to note everything I spot, or everything I think could possibly be. Yes. So that was what I did. Um... But yeah, I mean, go on, man. You, so, you run with this. So this is... So we've got this kind of psychiatric hospital and what I said in the video is like the synergies, the kind of ties to what we've seen in episodes one, two, three, and the start of four yep. up up to now. So we've got the bingo caller is yep. the living statue. Yeah. Which is pretty damn cool. Um, the Rubik's Cube that he throws around in bed is being completed by a man sat at the table. Yeah. Um, you have the itch with a B manager of the museum. Yeah. Um, he's now cuddling her teddies, watching something on the screen, taking pills. Yeah. Uh, the cupcake van from the episode where you see he's going backs and forwards between Stephen yeah, and Mark. Yeah. Well, they're handing out all the cupcakes at they the are. hospital. Yeah. Uh, the woman has drawn a really cool like drawing of Conju. Yeah, and and that woman I think is the woman who did the passport for Lola. Oh, okay. I that didn't isn't click in that my one. video. No, I that isn't in my video, but I think that's who it is. Cool. Okay, so the policeman that barges into his house, who I also believe is the guy that the mummy rips apart. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Um, that is obviously his carer slash guard. Yeah. 
I'm not quite sure what role he plays in the hospital. Yeah, uh, <laughs> got orderlies, I orderlies, think. Yeah. Kind of, Security, yeah, kind of carers, the guards, something. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Layla is is Layla. We don't really see, we we know who Layla is in the episode. We see her as another patient there, talking to. There him. were there were two things with Layla in this. One, she's, she's easy. eating Turkish delight, yeah. and she's eating Turkish delight when she gets her passport. And two, she's putting the postcards up for him to look at, which are the same postcards he puts up in episode one, so see from his mum. Yes. So that co- that ties back to our whole thing of his mum situation. Yep. Yeah. And um, the leg tied to the chair is the leg tied to the bed. Yep. Which was yep. kind of a cool... The, the scene that where he falls down. Yeah, now, yeah it's like a mirror, yeah. When he falls down, he drops a toy on the floor. Yeah, yeah, it's a Moon Knight toy. Is it a Moon Knight toy? It's a Moon Knight action figure, yeah. Is it? <laughs> yeah, well, well, a load of people have said that, like, there isn't actually an action figure of Moon Knight, but clearly this is a action figure which is made to look like Moon Knight. I, I've looked up online. Do you know what the actual action figure is that's been repainted? Well, I was thinking it was Skeletor. It is Skeletor from, from Masters yeah. of the Universe. They've <laughs> yeah, repainted yeah. it to Moon Knight, yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I looked at it, I was like, that's Skeletor, and I know what they've done. Yeah. But yeah, I, yeah. Okay. That made me laugh a lot. Um, yeah. You had his cane at the... Uh, the um, Obviously, yeah. Harrow is the doctor himself. Yeah. And he yeah. still had his cane on the side, and he also had the shoes. Yeah, obviously there's the movie, the video of Stephen Grant. The, yes. The adventurer. Yeah. Yep. Um, so yeah, you got the picture on the wall, which is where when Stephen first wakes up, or we first see him waking up, and he's yeah. kind of in the mountains. That yeah, is yeah, the picture yeah. on the wall. Yeah, and um, random giant hippo. <laughs> well, we which also is see Harrow's. Toys. Yeah, we also see Harrow's uh, sandals. Yes, um, the shoes. Yeah, which, which they show us. Mark's kind of waking up a bit more at this point and he sees it via reflection which I liked because obviously the show does a lot with mirrors and a lot with reflection so I thought that was kind of cool um, yeah. he then breaks away from him runs, uh, Harrow is just like oh don't hurt him, don't hurt him you know he's just confused and Mark beats the crap out of the two orderlies biting one and punching the other the world starts shifting as he's moving, which again is kind of like in my mind as like Mark's really struggling here, like something's really going on. Yeah. Um he then runs into a room to hide, and when he's in the room there's a sarcophagus where you can hear someone trying to get out desperately. And he opens it and Stephen jumps out and the two of them embrace each other and then they're like how? How are we separate? And I don't know. And then my favorite moment, though, which is such a Mark clearly has been through so much mentally. When he says to Stephen, "What's the last thing you remember?" and Stephen says, "Harrow shooting us." Yeah, Mark's like, "Yes, yes, yeah, he's so happy crazy. about it." Yeah. And it's like, wait, what? <laughs> he's completely forgetting the fact he's literally talking to himself. Yeah, he's happy. He's not in crazy. Front of him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Whilst, yeah, so he's like over the moon at that whilst talking to himself yeah. in another body after he embraced him. You know, he's not questioning that right now. Yeah, so Mark, Mark's having a tough time. Yeah, like that, surely the bit you'd be questioning is the fact that Stephen would... is stood in front of him. Well, that would uh, be the moment that you'd go, oh, well, clearly I'm dead. Clearly this yeah, is this now just in my head. Yeah, else, yeah. Yeah, now, when he leaves the room, so this is the bit I mentioned a little bit earlier on when I mentioned the other alt, or yes. potentially the other, when they leave the room, there is another room, another sarcophagus with someone trying to break out. Desperately now, this is the bit, yeah. And this is the bit that makes me think that Mark knows that that is locked away because Mark looks and keeps walking. Yeah. Now, if you know that you've just opened one of these and Stephen was in it and then you get to the next room and there's another one wouldn't that make you curious if you genuinely didn't know about another personality or another very much so because like Stephen's face does seem more like ah whereas Mark's like no keep going off we go yep yep, keep going keep going and it yes made me wonder it made me is Mark the alt is Mark even if he is the core person does he is he aware of the other one then he knows how violent it is so he's pretending 
like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Nope, definitely not. Nope, no, it's just me and Stephen. Me and Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, I, I don't know, but it felt it felt deliberate. It felt like he looked, saw it, and went, nope, you're staying in there. <laughs> yeah, I am not helping you out. No, yeah. Yeah, and then, and then um, they see a large shadow appear at the door, which the two of them are obviously nervous that it's a large security guard rocking up. Um, and then That would have made uh, sense. That would have made complete sense. Um, however, the door's open... And it's a hippopotamus headed person. Hippopotamus. And Mark and Stephen look on in horror as the hippopotamus headed person says, Hi! And the two of them then scream like children, and that's the end of the episode. Yeah! And I've just sat there open mouthed, like, Yeah. What has just what? happened? Like, it was quite funny, like, so Nat was watching it with me. <laughs> and she's really into yeah. this. She's really enjoying Moon Knight. I didn't know she good, would on it. Um, good, good. Re- and she just went, okay, I was keeping up with this until the hippo. Yeah. And I was yeah, like, yeah, wow. Yeah. I mean, you were keeping up for it for about 10 minutes more than I was. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, well was... to be fair, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm there. <laughs> I, I, I got I, it all and then a hippo appeared and now I'm confused. And I'm like, that was the bit. Well, was... I, I, think, I think the sheer craziness of that last 10 minutes or so... I think froze everything out the window. Um, but to try and to try and put it together, then I think, and this again purely theory, purely me thinking, I think that Stephen and or Mark are basically in purgatory. They are they've been shot and they're dying, and I think their soul or souls are being weighed. You think about where they've been shot and where they've been killed. And the fact that in that first episode, we saw that little girl say to Stephen, but, you know, does it upset you? You weren't allowed to go through the field of reeds, you know? And he's like, well, I'm not dead, am I? Mm -hmm. And now we've got this situation. It feels to me like that was a hint, like we had a horrible feeling it was going to be. And this is kind of like them being judged. And this hippopotamus is actually an Egyptian deity. Uh, it's the goddess Tauret. Tauret, yes. Now, I'm not sure on the pronunciation. Everyone I've heard has said Tauret. However, if I go to the Egyptology um, pronunciation thing on Google, it says Taure. Like, you don't pronounce the last T. So... I don't know. Oh, okay. Uh, I genuinely don't know. But um, uh, the description is, um, this was the goddess um, and was generally considered a protective deity. It was at times associated with childbirth and looking after mothers. Uh, she referred to as the Great One and also had connections to the afterlife. Oh. I, I do wonder if perhaps this particular deity is there to try and help guide you know the soul. Do you like? And these two are going to be like, no, we got to get back. And I and I just sort of wonder whether we're going to see that. Whether we're going to see some sort of, you know, I'm I'm the avatar for Konshu. You can't let me die. He's like, oh, how is Konshu? He's been put in stone. Help him out. Yeah. Oh. Do, do you see what I yeah. mean? It's, it's kind of like, or is Layla going to have to go and try and release Konshu to save Mark and or Stephen? Do, do you see what I mean? It's like... Yeah, it's... There's there's a lot of stuff there, but that's what I think is going on, because the, the, the psychiatric hospital is a direct pull from a comic book run of Moon Knight, where Mark is led to believe that everything that's happened to him was all in his head, and you as the reader are kind of taken down that path for a while before you know you realise it's not that, it's something else yeah. someone's got into his head. I think this is a nod to that, but I think it's purgatory. I think it's a kind of halfway between the living and the dead. Uh, like a, And all the fact that all these similarities are just because these are the people from their memories being manifested into this. Um, but yeah, the the Egyptian hippo goddess deity at the end was was kind of hilarious, really. Yeah, it was just so random. Just like hi, yeah. what? Well, the hi, and then them going ah, like yeah. I mean, that is probably the reaction I would have. Let's be honest. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to lie. That's that's pretty much where I'd be yeah. on that. Yeah, hippo-headed deity comes through the door. I'm definitely going to be worried about it. Um, one of the things as well that I read this week, which I thought was kind of interesting and I thought was worth mentioning, is uh, do you remember the scene in the previous episode where Konshu is speaking via Mark to the other gods? Yep. And he mentions you lot have retreated to the Overoid. Um, in Egyptian mythology, this is a place that has been um, mentioned also in Marvel Comics before. And it's basically uh, a place similar to like Asgard. Oh, okay. um, it's a place where, if you think about Loki, Odin, Thor go to Asgard, the Egyptian gods in Marvel Comics, etc., go to the Overoid. That's kind of like their place away from Earth. So... It's kind of interesting to me that like, mm. that was mentioned. That was kind of yeah. sewn into it, and we'll see where that goes. Um, but yeah, I thought that was worth bringing up. But what? Where? Where do you think next episode? I mean, to me, I genuinely don't know where the next episode's going to go. I kind of like that, and I kind of like that I'm left to theorize. But at the same time, there's only two left. Yeah, I, that, I don't know that's, what. That's the thing for me at the moment is the fact of with only two episodes left. And this kind of being like mm. a what the hell ending. Yeah. I honestly I couldn't even make a guess at kind of what's gonna happen next. Like I am so just kind of I have got no idea. Like, is the next episode gonna be purely them set at this hospital? Are we gonna yeah. get stuff from outside it thrown in? Is it gonna be yeah. a kind of start of episode and then once the episode starts, something happens and bang, we're straight back to normal. And that was just kind of a, yeah. a mind for all of us. Like, no, I honestly, no, I couldn't, I couldn't even try to guess at what's going to happen. But I no. must admit, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, you and me both. Yeah, absolutely, I am. Um, I, I think uh, we should in the next episode, in my opinion, finally learn about this third personality uh, and learn about it you know yes. is it going to be jake from the comics is it going to be another ver- it's just i i think they've hinted at it and the hints have built and built and built so this week it's basically right there the, the the sarcophagus rocking and him not letting that person out i think perhaps they need to reconcile to be able to kind of save their soul sort of thing um I mean, but i don't know it's, it's just going to be so crazy watching the same actor running around as three different people on the screen I yeah, mean, he's I, doing a phenomenal job in the yeah, acting as it I, is. Add a third one in. Yeah, I think. I think again. I think Oscar Isaac deserves a lot of recognition. I want um, Jake to be no, Australian, have an English and American and an Australian accent, all running around. It'd be amazing. As long as he, as long as he can do it well. Yes, I'm fine with that. One thing I'd say is Oscar Isaac's done really well, and I'm really loving Moon Knight. And I love the. I know it's a limited run series, but to me, it's kind of like okay. Well, Moon Knight as a character is probably going to be in other things. Then yes, the news that's come out yesterday, um, as we record this, is that Oscar Isaac literally only signed up for the series, so he's not under any sort of Marvel contract to do more. Which is strange. Which is very different from Marvel. Bearing That's in very... mind that everyone is expecting Scarlet Witch to die in the next Doctor Strange, yet has yeah. signed another five project. Yeah. Which also I love is the fact they don't sign them up to movies anymore. They sign them up to no, projects. projects. Yeah. I love that. But yeah, even people like you know Elizabeth Olsen has got another five project contract, yet yeah. everyone expected her to die in the next movie, yet Isaacs yeah, hasn't well. got anything past this. It's it's interesting because you know these things are rumors, but they do tend to sort of once you see a certain weight behind it, it typically is fact. Um, yeah. And I, I do I do wonder about that, and I do wonder if perhaps they're trying to deliberately allow that to be out there because they want people to watch these final episodes with zero expectation of what could happen. And then at the end, of- Moon Knight will return. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Moon Knight, Moon Knight, or the very last scene. There's an after credit where Blade talks to Moon Knight. So we've seen him recruit the Black Knight. Now we see him in an after credit rec- recruit Moon Knight. He has a bit you of a thing for Knights, that... doesn't he? Yeah, exactly. But you sure? I mean, it could. You know, that could happen, and that would be enough for all of us to be like, "Ah, oh, Midnight Suns, baby." Here we go. Yeah. Because the other characters in the Midnight Suns are, of course, the Ghost Rider is one that a lot of people want to see return, and Marvel do have control over. Yeah, I would love to see the guy that played him in um, Ace and the Shield. 
Oh, I thought he was yeah, really good. Yeah, he was very good. Yeah, I thought he was very I good. I did not that, enjoy but... the movie from all that time ago. No, that was rubbish. no, no, no. No, they, 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 let's face it, comic book movies of that time were of that time. Like, even the Punisher great. movie was rubbish. Yeah. Daredevil, yeah, they, they... rubbish. Yeah. Oh, Daredevil, that's got to be one of the worst things I've ever seen. You know, um, a friend Kaylee, who appeared on episode one of this, still has not watched Daredevil the series because of how much she hated that film. Do you know, I can understand that, but it's a lot better. (laughs) I'm like, trust me, you need to watch it. She's like, no, no, ruined me. I'm not watching it. You know, no. I'm like, no, please, you've got to try it. Um, And I will continue to fight that good fight because that show needs to be watched by everybody. Yeah, the film itself was awful. But yeah. So absolute garbage. So I would like to see if they're going to bring him in. It'd be nice to see the guy from Gar- uh, Agents. The only issue with that, of course, is they seem to be completely dismissing Agents. Um, Agents of Shield. So much stuff happened in that show that is now just being completely ignored and taken away. Yeah. And, uh, even the fact that the Marvel Netflix shows are now being treated more as canon than Agents of Shield. I'm not quite sure what happened there because when that started, it was very much a Kevin Feige Marvel Studios project, yeah. but something must have changed. I think I, I, don't know. The, I remember the main thing that happened originally was they caught mm-hmm. up with the movies too fast. Yeah. And they then had to go off into space and stuff because they're like, we, we need to get them away from the events otherwise. Yeah. yeah. So whether that kind of then ruined it for them. Because yeah, you I had the know. click it and everything bizarre. else, and the click didn't affect them whatsoever. And, no, but they were yeah. jumping around in time at that point, so yeah, and, and yeah, that, that show did go off the rails, yeah. in my humble opinion. But um, anyway, that is our show for this <laughs> week. That is Moon Knight episode four, season one, and done probably. Uh, we will be back next Monday to discuss episode five uh, for Marvel Monday continuing. Um, keep an eye on our socials for all the other shows that we're going to be doing as and when they're going to be airing. Uh, if you're a fan of The Walking Dead, Walking Dead Wednesdays does continue as we've transitioned over to Fear of the Walking Dead now. Um, and like I said, yeah, do keep an eye on socials because there are a lot of shows returning and we will let you know when we're going to be talking about them. Uh, but yeah, get in touch with us as well. Let us know what you thought of Moon Knight Episode 4. Uh, drop us a message on any of social media or email us. It's either Sam or Stefan at stuffandthangspodcast.com. We'll be back next week, everybody. You take care. See you later, everyone. Hippopotamus. 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 Ow. Thank you for listening to the Stuff and Things podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. You can find us on Facebook or online. Simply search the Stuff and Things podcast to join in our conversation every week. <laughs>